everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day, and today I'll be reviewing The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. What? Marie Rutkowski? 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 I... <sighs> yeah, okay. So, I don't have a physical copy of The Winner's Curse because I read it as an ebook, but I want the physical copy so badly, not only because the cover is really pretty, but because I need it. Do you ever do that? Do you ever read a really good ebook and then you love it so much that you need a physical copy of it for your collection? Because that's what I do, and I need The Winner's Curse. I need it. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that I loved this book. I really, really loved this book, and this review is going to be spoiler-free, not because I don't want to discuss specific plot points, but because I want everyone to be able to watch this review, and I want everybody to read this book. Honestly, I just enjoyed this book so much. I was just so captivated and enthralled by the world and the characters and the situations in which the characters were. And for me, The Winner's Curse was one of those books where you are so caught up in the whirlwind of what's going on in the novel that you can't even focus on its flaws. Like, you are that enraptured by everything that's going on. That's how The Winner's Curse was for me, and it's been a really, really long time since I read a book that just pulled me in as much as The Winner's Curse did. And for that reason, I fell in love with this book, and if you follow me on Twitter, I tweeted about it a few times, and I just I can't stop talking about this book because I enjoyed it so, so much. That being said, if I were to reread this book, which I probably will, I would probably find some flaws or some things that I would normally critique in it, but because the reading experience for me was just so magical, I'm going to admit that this review probably won't be very balanced or level-headed or critical at all. I'll probably just be gushing, and I'm sorry for that in advance because I know that's not a very fair review, but I just want to tell people how much I like this book and what I liked about it. For those who don't know, The Winner's Curse is about a girl named Kestrel, who is the daughter of the main general of the army, and she accidentally stumbles into a slave auction and she ends up buying a slave. And this slave is stoic and disrespectful and they, he doesn't act like a proper slave should. And so, in the beginning, they're initially very, very cold to each other. But eventually, as you read, they start to develop and it is absolutely wonderful. And this is really taboo territory, you know, a master and a slave having any kind of romantic relationship together. That's it's pretty racy. But I thought Marie Rudkowski, I should just stop saying her last name, did a really, really good job dealing with this subject. I first heard of The Winner's Curse because there was so much buzz over this book in the blogosphere. So many bloggers that I absolutely adore door, such as Wendy Darling from The Midnight Garden and Kat and Steph from Cuddlebuggery, they loved this book. And these are usually the reviewers that are not pleased easily. So the fact that everyone was loving this book definitely called my attention to it. And then on The Midnight Garden, Wendy shared this guest post by the author. And the author shared a small excerpt from the book, and it's only about 200 words or so, but that excerpt made me feel so many feelings, and I was like, oh my god, if she can do this with only 200 words, how much could she do with a whole book? So, I didn't even know what this book was about before I picked it up. I just knew that I had to read it. That short excerpt was enough to completely win me over. Our main character is Kestrel, and she isn't like a lot of YA heroines, and that sounds really dumb to say out loud, like, she's so different. But I say that she's different because she's not a fighter, and she's not super strong. She's not like Katniss Everdeen or even Beatrice Pryor in the sense that she can hold her ground physically. Kestrel cannot fight at all, and at least not with physical weapons and her physical strength. No, what she has going for her is her wit, her knowledge, and her deception. Basically, she is really observant and manipulative, and she is a strategist, not a soldier. And I 
really, really liked her. I mean, sometimes I was frustrated with her, but at the end of the day, I really admired her character. I thought she was a really relatable person, and even though she sometimes made stupid decisions, maybe a little bit. It didn't really bother me. Like I said earlier, I was just enjoying this book so much that I didn't really care about the negatives. And then there's the slave character, and I don't know whether I want to call him by his name because you don't find out until like a little bit in the book what his name actually is. But then again, I feel weird just calling him the slave. I'm just gonna call him he or him. Okay, so he is also a really complex character. He and Kestrel are both really, really well-rounded characters, I thought. They're very layered and they're very complex and they were interesting. I really liked reading about them. They fascinated me. And he is brooding, but a hard worker and he's talented and he has his own backstory. And his backstory makes things really, really difficult. Right from the beginning, you get to know that he has his own secret agenda as a slave, and that makes everything so much more difficult for him and Kestrel. I think the biggest problem I had with Kestrel is that she's known to be this really, really intelligent and observant and perceptive strategist, but yet she was so trusting with the slave you kind of think about it like if you're supposedly so smart, how can you possibly give out such valuable information like it's worth nothing? This book reads like a fantasy. The tone is very fantasy-like, and I've seen people on Goodreads shelve it as a fantasy, but it's not a fantasy. There's nothing magical or mythical about these books. Maybe I would categorize it as historical, but historical doesn't feel like the right term for it either. I really don't know what I would categorize it as. But mainly, it's a romance story. It's about Kestrel and her slave. Despite the taboo of their situation, it felt so real to me. Their extremely gradual attraction was so believable and nice. I mean, you see it coming from miles away because of their chemistry and how much everything builds up, but then when it actually comes together, it's like an explosion. It hits you so suddenly. I think the best thing about their relationship was their dialogue. The way Marie wrote the dialogue was so fantastic, in my opinion. Every single line between them held meaning or sizzled on the page. It was just like every single line was perfection. I just thought that their relationship was really really well done because it's gradual and it builds up and there's so much chemistry and tension between them and it's just electric. And even though this book is mainly a romance, there's still a plot and it's actually a really fascinating plot, I think. I mean, it's not breakneck pace, super exciting, tearing through the pages, but it's still interesting and there's history to it and it's just... Everything about this book had a lot of depth, I think. The relationship had depth, the characters had depth, the plot, the history had depth, and I really enjoyed that. Also, Marie's writing is super, super great. As I mentioned before, she's really, really great with dialogue, but she's just great at writing in general. I'm going to leave the link for the excerpt that I read on The Midnight Garden because I want everybody to read it, and if you read the excerpt and you're like, oh my god, so good, like I was, then yeah, I encourage you to read this book, buy it. I want everybody to read this book, actually. Just to get a little taste of the book, I would definitely check out the excerpt that I linked because it is the bomb, and reading it in context in the book makes you feel even more pain. If you like to have your heart ripped out, stomped on, torn apart, stitched back together, shredded again, taped back together, and then completely shattered, pick up this book! If you like to sign up for emotional turmoil that will bring you both pain and pleasure, then yes, read this book. It seriously takes you on a roller coaster of emotions, and then the end, I'm not gonna lie, it leaves you a little bit frustrated and heartbroken and kind of sad. Just the voluntary miscommunication on a certain character's part was really, really frustrating, but, oh my god, this book, man, it made me feel all the feels. 
This book will make you melt or feel electrocuted or make you really sad or really happy or really angry. It gives you such a wide range of emotions and I thought Marie just wrote this book so freaking well. I'm not sure how coherent this book review is or if you can even call it a review since basically I just gushed and told you to read this book. But that's honestly how I felt about it. I honestly think that it's good enough to recommend to a lot of people. The Winner's Curse was just really, really special for me for some reason. I just really, really loved it. And maybe you won't enjoy it. There's never a guarantee that you're going to love a book. And I don't want people to hate me if they pick it up because I said it was good and then they hate it. But honestly, I honestly would recommend this to all my friends. So yeah, I want you to read it. I am so serious when I say that this will be one of my favorite books of this year. No kidding. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye!